Hello there, everybody, and welcome back. We are going to keep on learning more trig today. Um, we're going to carry on over the next two lessons, and we're learning about some um, things called the sine law and the cosine law. And basically, these are going to be tools that are actually super useful tools that are going to help us working with um, uh, working with different shapes, just as much as uh, learning about Pythagoras and Sokotoa did uh, way back when. So um, if we picture a triangle here, uh, ABC, and it says, for each angle, calculate the ratio of the sine of the angle to the length of the opposite side. So um, you can see this is not a right angle triangle. And that's where sine law is going to be um, really useful, is it doesn't have to be. So if this, this is angle A right here, then I'm going to call this side over here side A. And if this is angle B, then the side opposite, I'm gonna, opposite it, I'm going to call it side B. And over here, I've got angle C. And so the side opposite it is going to be side C. So the first thing we need to learn about with both sine and cosine law is that whatever the angle is, the side that's opposite from that is going to have the same letter. And we usually use capitals for the angle and then lowercase for the, uh, for the sides. So we're going to find here the ratio of the side of the angle to the length of the opposite side. So we're going to calculate here the sine of A um, over A. So that would be, for example, the sine of... 40 degrees divided by opposite that is 5.0 and then we're going to do this for each for each angle so I'm also going to do let's see uh, the sine of the sine of B over B so that would be the sine of angle B is 110 divided by side B which is 7.3 and I'm going to figure that one out and then I'm going to do the sine of C, and I'm going to divide it by side C. So that's the sine of 30 degrees, and I'm going to divide that by 3.9. And um, by all means, you can use your calculator to, uh, to do this. wouldn't expect you to do this in your head. So let's go to our calculator and say, all right, so the sine of this first angle here. So the sine of 40 degrees. I'm going to divide that by 5.0. And I get an answer which is 0.12855, blah, blah, blah. It goes on for a while. But I'm going to keep on doing this for all my other sides. So, like, for example, let's find the sine of B. The sine of B was 110. And I'm going to divide that by B, which was 7.3. And I get virtually the exact same number, 0.128. And then it changes a little bit after that okay but we can see that to the first few decimals it's really really close let's now try this other one over here so the sine of c the sine of 30 degrees and i'm going to divide that by 3.9 and what do you know to the first three digits i get the exact same number 0.128 and it's a little bit different after that so what i want you to recognize is that um for each of these examples um, they're, they're giving us basically the exact same number, which is 0 0.128 or 129, just depending on how we round it off. Okay, so this is 0 0.129, this was 0 0.129, 0 0.129, and then so is this one right here. This, was, this one was actually 0 0.128. Now I will point out that there is a slight difference there because these numbers, you can see these numbers have been rounded off as well. Right, so if I if I this was actually instead of five it was actually five point zero two or something, it might have given me the exact same answer. And so that's interesting. And basically, what that tells us is for the sine law, it says that the ratio, the relationship between the angle and the sides. So we take the ratio of the uh, sine of the angle to the opposite side. For any triangle, it's going to be the same everywhere inside that triangle. So um, written another way, the sine of a divided by a is equal to the sine of b divided by b which is equal to the sine of C divided by C. So basically, um, for any triangle, and that's what's really useful about this, it doesn't have to be a right angle triangle. For any triangle, the ratio of the sine of the angle over the opposite side is gonna be the same for all the sides. And we can use this then to find, um, to, to solve things about triangles that we, that we couldn't do before with just Pythagoras or, or our trig ratios. So I'm just gonna do a quick proof here to show where this comes from. And I know that um, students, if there's one thing they love, it's mathematical proofs. Um, and so I'll keep it short and sweet, but I think it's useful to see that there's a reason for this. It's not just something that we're going to tell you and then you have to believe it. So imagine I've got a triangle here and I haven't included any angles, but I've included all the sides and, and angles and called them A, B, C, D, like we talked about. 
And the first thing we do here is we just draw an altitude. An altitude is basically a line that goes straight down from the, the high point there, A, and that altitude is then going to make a right angle, a 90 degree angle with the, with the bottom. So if we do that, let's think about, for example, let's think about angle B. Uh, and you can see I've made kind of two triangles here. I've made a triangle on the left, right? So I've kind of got this triangle that's built in there. And then I've kind of got this other triangle here on the right that I've kind of created now. So there's two right triangles that I've sort of made. So let's think about, let's think about um, angle B. If I wanted to talk about angle B, I could say the sine of angle B is going to equal opposite, which in this case is H, divided by hypotenuse, with hypotenuse would be C. And I could do the same thing over here with, um, with angle C. Let's talk about angle C. The sine of angle C is going to equal the opposite, which is also H, divided by the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse of this triangle would be B. And so we can see here, th these have like an H in common. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, um, I'm just going to redraw this here. I'm just going to solve this for H. So I'm going to bring C to the other side. Now we get H is equal to C times the sine of B. And then over in this one, in this formula, I'm going to bring B to the other side, and I've got H is equal to B times the sine of C. And what I want you to recognize is that if H equals this, then H also equals this, which means these two things must equal each other. They must, they must therefore be equal to each other. And so I could write that as saying C times the sine of B is equal to B times the sine of C. And then all I need to do is kind of to get it back in that normal format we're used to that I showed you before, is I could just divide both sides by C, but also divide both sides by B, and then the C cancels on this side, and the B cancels on this side, and you can see we end up with the sine of B over B equals the sine of C over C. And you could do a similar proof um, for this angle A if you wanted to. Um, the point is, is that, that this is going to be true for any triangle, whether it's a right angle or not, and it's going to work for any sides of the triangle, as long as we keep the angle and the side opposite, as long as we talk about those as being the same letter. So imagine we've got a triangle here. Let's actually put this to work. We've got a triangle and it's uh, triangle PQR has angles of 36 degrees, so angle P is 36 degrees, and then side P is 24.8 meters, and side Q is 23.4 meters. So we're just gonna draw this out. So I'm gonna try and draw this roughly to scale. So maybe I'll draw angle P first, and to me that looks like that's about 36 degrees. Okay, so that'll be my angle P. And then um, that means that side P has to be about 28 degrees, and then side Q is about, um, is 23.4 degrees. So I'm just gonna draw this a little bit longer. Maybe I'll do it like that. And this is definitely not gonna be perfectly to scale, um, but that's okay. It's uh, it, it gives me a rough idea. So then this would be side P, and this is 24.8 meters. And uh, side Q, I can see side Q, it doesn't matter which one I choose. Maybe I'll make this side Q. This would be 23. 0.4 meters. So I do have to be a little careful because I can see that in my sketch here, this side looks shorter than this side here, and so mm, that's a little bit strange. It should be it should be longer based on the numbers. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of keep that in mind. So if this is side Q, then this over here must be angle Q, and then it, we're looking at PQR. So this here must be angle R, which makes this side R. And we need to solve the triangle, which means we need to find uh, sorry we need to find angle R to the nearest degree. So um, I can't find anything about angle R directly because I don't know side R and I don't know angle R. And so if you don't know the side or the angle, you kind of can't start there because we don't know anything about either of them. But what I could do is I could talk about angle P and Q. So I could say the sine of angle P divided by P is equal to the sine of angle Q divided by uh, Q. And if I just rearrange this, so I'm gonna multiply both sides by Q because I'm going to isolate Q on its own, so I'll multiply both sides by Q, I get, um, I get here sine of Q is equal to Q sine P all divided by P. And so I'm going to just put in my numbers and see what I get. So 23.4 times the sine of 36 degrees all divided by 24.8. And let's see what my calculator returns here. So I've got... Um, Let's see, 23.4 times the sine of 36 degrees 
I'm going to divide that by 24.8 and hit enter. And of course I get a like a decimal number, 0 0.5546, so 0 0.5546. I'll just cut it off there. I'll use the full number to find Q. So Q is just going to be inverse sine of 0 0.5546. And let's see what we get here. So I'm just going to do second function sine inverse sine of the answer that I got before. And this gives me 33.68, uh, which I'll just round off to 34 degrees. So this is 34 degrees. So I now know that this angle right here, Q, this angle has to be 34 degrees. And so I can use that to find R. So you might recall that all of the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. So basically angle P plus Q plus R have to add up to 180 degrees, which means that R is just going to be 180 degrees minus P and minus Q. So 180 minus uh, 36 and minus 34. Okay, so 36 and 34 make 70. So 180 minus 70 is going to be 110 degrees. Um, and there we go. And we can see that the problem with my original picture that I kind of sketched it out. So I wanted you to see this, that I drew a triangle. When I look at this, I go, wow, that sure doesn't look like 110 degrees. But the reason is, is remember that my original drawing wasn't actually that good in the first place. And so, um, and so it, it actually makes sense that it, that it is a larger angle. Okay, so this is another good example here. So um, again, this would be a great chance for you to just hit pause in the video. Just try this example. See if you can do it on your own. And then, um, and then, um, and then hit pause again to catch up. So here we go. So uh, angle triangle LMN is going to equal 64 degrees, and then side L is 25.2 centimeters, and side M is 16.5 centimeters. So I'm going to do, try and do a better job here of drawing this to scale because that kind of messed me up on the last example when my picture didn't match what I got. So a 64 degree angle would look something like this, and that's angle L. Side L is going to be 25. And then side M is going to be 16.5. So side L, the side opposite this, needs to be quite long. So if that's a 65 degree angle, then maybe maybe side L will be something like this, where it's going to be um, quite long. Right? Maybe it's like that. So this side here, L, would be 25.2 centimeters. And then side M, maybe I'll make this side over here side M because it looks like it's a little bit shorter and it comes in at 16.5 centimeters, which means this is angle M and this is angle N and that makes this side M. Um, and it says to solve the triangle. So solving the triangle means we'll find everything that's missing. Okay, so um, the first thing that we can find is it, it's helpful to just identify what you know, right? We know this angle right here. So I got this angle this side and this side. So what could I find first? Well, the first thing I could find is I could find the angle M. I can't do anything with N at all because I don't know the angle or the side and you need to know one or the other to, to find the opposite. So um, I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna start with uh, finding angle M. And so I could say the sine of L over L, that's an L, not a one, is equal to the sine of M divided by m, or if I rearrange this, the sine of m is equal to m times the sine of l all over l, which is equal to 16.5 times the sine of 64 degrees all divided by, uh, what do we got here, uh, 16, 25, 25.2 degrees, okay. And so this is going to equal, um, 16.5 times the sine of 64 divided by 25.2 and that's going to give me 0.58849 so 0 0.5885 approximately and so I'm going to solve for m and that's just going to equal the inverse second point inverse of sine 0.5885 which is Okay, so second function sine of the answer is 36 degrees. Okay, so that's going to be 
36 degrees. So that's handy. And now that I know that this is 36 degrees, then I can do, kind of do the math on angle N and find that angle N is going to be 180 minus 64 minus 36. And uh, 64 uh, plus 36, so well, I guess that's 100. So this is gonna be 80 degrees. Now when I look at my picture, this actually looks like it, yeah, that could be about 80 degrees. So I'm actually a lot happier with um, how I've done this drawing. And that's gonna be really important. If you, if you start finding angles and you realize that maybe your initial sketch was off, I actually recommend just, just redrawing it so that you can see what it looks like and it's gonna help you visualize that. So now that I know angle N, um, I can find um, I can find side n and so I could say that the sine of uh, n over n is going to equal the sine of and it doesn't matter which other combination of sides I use but maybe I'll just use I'll use m the sine of m over m now you got to be careful here because in this case we're going to solve for n and so to solve for n, I gotta do a little bit of fancy footwork. So I'm gonna first, I'm gonna multiply both sides by n. And the reason is because n is on the bottom, it's on the denominator, and I can't deal with it there. So I multiply both sides by n, I get this, I get sine n equals n sine m over m. And then what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to multiply by m so I'm going to multiply both sides by m to move m to the other side. But then I'm also going to divide everything by the sine of m. So dividing by the sine of m. Um, and so that I get rid of both of these things. And so what I end up with is I end up with n is equal to m sine n over sine m. Maybe I could have chosen better letters that don't sound like the exact same thing. Okay, so uh, finding M, what do I got? M is 16.5, 16.5 times the sine of N, which was, we found that was 80 degrees. And we're gonna divide that by the sine of M, which is 36 degrees. And so I can just put this in my calculator. So I'm gonna go 16.5, and I'm gonna go times the sine of 80, and I'm gonna divide that by the sine of 36 degrees. And I get 27.6, so call it, yeah, 27.6, so 27.6 centimeters. Now when I go back over to my picture here and I look at this and I say 27.6, would this be the longest side of the triangle? Well, actually, yeah, I think it would. So the way I drew my triangle this time around, um, it really helped me out because uh, it matched what was going on. And so when I got an answer, I could go back and go, yeah, okay, that could be the longest side, that works. Now, something we're gonna talk about, and we're gonna look at this in class, uh, and I, but I just wanna leave you with it for you to think about it, is um, this is actually not necessarily the only solution that'll work. So remember that we found that M was 36 degrees, okay? The problem with that is, remember when you find the sine of an angle, we found that it was 36 degrees, but it's entirely possible that it also should be this angle right here. So it could be 36 or it could be this entire angle here where this is 36. And so the sine right here when I solved for um, the sine of M, my answers here should have been 36 but it also should have been this larger angle which is 180 minus 36. Right, so that's 180 minus 36. And so that would be 140. So I actually should get two possible answers. Um, and so in this case, I think it's, it's going to work out where um, it didn't make sense for it to be 144. And so we would actually have rejected that at that point. But um, in future examples, we might see like, hold on a second. Actually, it's possible to have two different scenarios depending on the setup. But we'll talk about that in class. So um, last thing I want to look at is I just want to consider one thing here. So we're going to look at the, uh, we've got a triangle, uh, P, Q, R. And um, they're looking to use the sine law to find the values of X, which we don't know, and the values of P and R that we don't know. And so what I want you to recognize is we know angle Q. I don't know why that's called X. That should really be solved, called side Q. We know side P, but not angle P. We know side R, but not angle R. And so you can see we're in a situation where we know, we know one of the things 
about P and P or Q and Q and R and R, but we don't know any two things about any of them. And so we can't go anywhere. Um, this is what we call like, if I know the side and then I know the angle and then I know the side of a triangle, this runs into, we call it the side angle side situation. And for this, we can't use sine law. So sine law just won't work. That's a no go. Um, and so that's what we'll learn about next. We'll learn about something called cosine law, which is what we could use potentially to solve this situation. Okay, that's it for the sign law.